It's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability of solving crime is unequal in the history of detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Yes. We can check it and see where it leads us. Oh, Watson. Yes. Yes. Are you 
on duty here last night? Sure. And then I have watchmen here. Stayed on this morning until Mr. Allen, and the owner gets here. Did you see the fire start? Yes, yes. I, I was just coming back from the lunch wagon. They got me a cup of gel. Oh, Alex. And get there. Uh, Alex, how did this happen here? Well, Mr. Hamilton, like I was telling these fellas, I was coming back from getting a cup of coffee, and suddenly I seen a big flare of greenish blue light in, in the room just outside the office. And before I could turn around, the whole place was ablaze. The office was in this corner, wasn't it? Uh, hey, that's right. Now, who are these men, Alex? I'm Sergeant Matheson, City Police. This is Nick Carter, investigator for the insurance company. Well, I'm Walter Anderson, owner of the warehouse. He said you saw an explosion, Alex. Uh, kind of like that, but there wasn't so much noise uh, like an explosion. I don't understand. There was nothing in there to explode. Whatever exploded was planted there for that purpose, Mr. Anderson. This fire was no accident. It was set. But why? There was nothing here but furniture. Who would want to destroy that? A pyromaniac doesn't care what burns as long as something does. I understand that you were fully insured. Oh, yes. Completely. Was the warehouse full, Mr. Lentz? Very full indeed, Sergeant. The housing shortage has prevented many families from taking their furniture out, even though they want to. Yes. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Alex, have, uh, have you seen Mr. Taylor? Uh, no, no, sir. I haven't. Well, yeah, yeah. He called me about an hour ago and said he'd be seen here. I wonder what's keeping him. Uh, Mr. Emerson. I suppose you kept your safe here in the office. Well, we had no safe, Miss Carter. All business was transacted to the downtown office. No safe here? Yeah. Oh, that's bad, Peculiar. Yeah, well, what's peculiar about there being no safe here? Maybe let's get out of the headquarters. Nothing more to do here. All right. Come along, Walter. We've got work to do. I just want you to find out who had the serial number I just gave you. His name and present address and where he works. If you can get it. Okay, Nick, I'll get at it right away. Uh, when will you be back to the office? As soon as I get through here at headquarters. Bye. Hey, Nick. Why were you so surprised that there was no face in the warehouse office? Huh? Matty, have you forgotten? What? One thing about the Jersey Firebug was that before he set fire to a building, he always robbed the safe that was in it. Uh-huh. I see what you mean. You think it might not have been the Jersey Firebug that kept this one, huh? Well, I'm just putting that fact away in the back of my head. Now, how about checking the prints of this rock against the others? I got the other prints right here, Nick. The CL is stuck out of it. Where do I put those? Here? Oh, here they are. Now then, where's the clock you found? Uh, here it is. No. Huh? They're not the same. Well, that don't prove the Jersey Firebug didn't do it, man. No, 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 of course not. Matty, you got one of the clocks you found at the other five? Well, there's one at the 48th Street Station. They took it up there to make some tests on it. Want me to have it sent down, Nick? Yeah. I'd like to have this clock checked against the other to see if the system of wiring is the same. But isn't it? We may find that this fire was set by someone trying to make us think the Jersey Firebug did it. Yeah, but look, Nick. Not the newspapers have ever carried anything about how that fellow said he fired. That part of it was always kept secret. So he wouldn't know that we had the information about it. Now, you better check the clock just the same. All you stay here and wait for the other one to be sent down. Mm -hmm. And you and Maddie check carefully to see if the way the clock is wired up is the same or different. Mm -hmm. Sure, come to the office. I'll be waiting for you. This information may be very valuable. Mm -hmm. Hi, Betty. Hi, Nick. How's business? Well, business must be dull with you, no matter how it is, isn't it? How do you mean, Miss? Never saw you reading a mystery magazine before. Oh, oh, that. I picked it up in the drugstore this morning when I stopped in for my coffee. And I've right, seen a little bit dull around here this morning. I was just looking for it. <laughs> as long as you don't believe anything you're reading, it won't hurt you, I guess. <laughs> oh, um, did you find anything interesting with the fire in it? Oh, well, no. Might be the work of the dirty fire bug, since an alarm clock was used to set it off. The dirty fire bug? Yes. Why the surprise? Well, there's an article in this magazine I'm reading on him and all the fires he said. Huh? One of the series on pyromaniacs, apparently. Yes, so. Will you explain that system you use? Well, sure. You see? Diagrams and descriptions tells all about the clock. Well, does it show how the clock was hooked up? Oh, well, not in detail, no. It just says it was used to set off the fire. Huh. Well, does it mention the fact that he always robbed his face first? No. Uh, did he? Hmm. Well, someone should have read that article and tried to indicate the girl's work on the other without knowing about this stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, did you find out to whom the army serial number belongs? Oh, after considerable telephoning around and getting stunted from one person to another, I finally got what you wanted. 
Huston. He's Charles J. Huston. Let out a couple of months ago on a medical discharge. Anxiety neurosis, they told me. I checked the U.S. yes, but they have no record of his having any job. Found any address for him? Well, the only address they have was the Sunset Trailer Camp out on Long Island. Yes. If you were discharged because of anxiety and neurosis, you must be the kind of man who would set fires and things. Oh, Patsy, you ought to know better than that. But me, Patsy. Patsy, when they discharge a man from the army because of a neurosis, it doesn't mean he's cracked up or crazy. And anxiety and neurosis is like overwork, run down. Boy, it's undoubtedly perfectly sane. Too many people, just as you did now, think a man with a medical discharge is nuts and it seems to have anything to do with him. All he really needs is a room as a chance to pull himself together again. Be just the same as you or I. Oh, but Miss Dick, too, you found that the fire seems to lead directly to him. Well, if you did it, Patsy, it has nothing to do with it having a medical discharge. No war angle to this whatsoever. Uh, and who's never been in the army become fire for? Uh, well, I'm sorry, Miss. I, I guess I just didn't think. Yeah, just like a lot of other people. Oh, I'm not trying to be company about this, Patsy, but it's just that... Hi, Nick. Well, how are you, Patsy? Well, uh, hi, Waldo. From the look on your face, you must have some news. Uh, well, what do you find, Waldo? You are right, Nick. The clock we found at the warehouse is picked up altogether different from the one that he had. Not the same at all. Oh. If it were, no space to press, and an article in a magazine telling how to keep going. Uh, uh, I'd say it all adds up to let the Jersey Firebird out completely. In which case, you better be on our way to the Sunset Trailer Camp to have a talk with Charles J. Haskell. This is quite a camp, isn't it, Mike? Yeah. Must be more or less permanent, too. The only thing look. Oh, yeah. Poor Waldo. What caused that, you might? thinking how sore Waldo was that you wouldn't bring him along. Waldo is one of those things called a procrastinator. <laughs> Give him a job to do, but because it's just routine running around, he tries to put it off as long as he possibly can. <laughs> oh, well, this is the Hatchin trailer, this green one with the white fin. It matches the description the man that gave you. This is the right location. Yeah. And if the door being open means Hatchin's around somewhere. Well, we can look in, can't we? That won't hurt anything. Yeah, that should be all right. But I hope it shows up soon. Oh, well, there you are, Nick. Oh, Matt. Well, 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 the right arm of the law. What happened to you? You're right behind us. The next time I looked around, you disappeared. Oh, I got stopped at that last red light, and I got boxed up behind the truck and couldn't get out. Everything <laughs> happens to me. <laughs> um, is this the uh, husband's place? Yes, we were just going to have a look inside while we were waiting. Just look here. Hmm? Look at that. Yeah. He's made sort of a crime of his war through the head. Hey, two furry pistols, shampoo, cartridge belt. And two sacks like the one Nick found after the fire, with the same identification on them. Yeah. And there should be a third one. Empty spaces. I guess, eh? What's in them? Magnesium flares. Oh, what a beautiful blaze that makes. It certainly looks like it has some had something to do with it. And the greenish blue sort of explosion the watchman saw could easily be a magnesium player. Yeah. It don't look so good for Mr. Houston. He's got some pretty fast explaining to do. Must be around somewhere. I wouldn't let the door open this way. What the devil are you doing in my trailer? Are you Charles Houston? Yes, yeah, so what? Stand up here to see you. We're out, so we just looked in. How'd you get in? Uh, the door was open, so we walked in. Yeah, that's a likely story. I left the door locked. You must have broken it. That's what you did. What do you want? Are you sure you locked the door when you left? Sure, I'm sure. You calling me a liar? Not at all. But it was open when we got here. Yeah? Well, look here. You forced it open. See? Here's the marks of the Jimmy. Huh? I thought you're right. Why did Jimmy open? If we didn't do it, have some believe it. Why should I believe you? I can see what I see. The lock's busted and you're inside. Now, look here, Haskell. Cops don't go around breaking in doors that way. Cops? They're the worst of the whole bunch. A lot of boys. All right, all right, right Haskell. Wait a minute. When did you leave here? Yesterday morning. What's it to you? What have you been doing since then? Why should I answer a lot of silly questions? I don't have to. you better take it easy. Now, we want some information. If you won't tell us here, I'll have to take you down to headquarters and make you answer. What did I do? Kill somebody? What have you been doing since yesterday morning? <laughs> Isn't it bad enough to have no home at this lousy trailer? No place to bring my wife where we can live together? No job, no nothing? But you have to come here and accuse me of heaven knows why. We're not accusing you of anything yet. Uh, 
Tell me, Haskam, uh, what happened to that stack of magnesium flares that's missing from your collection? What do you mean, missing? It was here when I left. Well, it's not there now. Any idea what happened to it? No, I haven't. You probably took it. Hey, my alarm clock is gone, too. Well, that's good. You bust in my door, steal my stuff, then ask me a lot of silly questions. I'm not accountable to anybody anymore. I got my discharge. I'm a free man. Free as anybody can do with the world the way it is. Look, Haskell, you're not making things any easier for yourself by doing this. Hey, hi, Charlie. What? What's What's that? Job for? What job? The trucking job you had. What do you mean, trucking job? You're crazy. Oh, my God, huh? Okay, buddy. How did you learn my name, Moses? I thought you didn't have any job. You must know it was just a temporary job I took yesterday. Trucking some furniture. Yep. Furniture, did you say? Yes, furniture. For the Emerson Warehouse. It was a rush job. They had a lot of stuff to get out in a hurry and needed drivers. Paid over scale, so I took it. I needed the money. And I still have no job. Next, you hear that? Hear what? Look, Haskell, you go to work for Emerson. You're going all night. The warehouse burns down by a fire. Set with magnesium flares like you've got there. And you I had nothing to do with any fire. No? Your army number is on the bag. We found the building when the fire was out. A bag just like them two you got in there now. Son, you and I are going down to headquarters. I want to know a lot more about this. Hey, you can't take me. No? <laughs> oh, yes, I can. I'm going to. Tell me this. Uh, no, not just yet, honey. I want to look around a bit. Sir. Oh, okay, I'll be seeing you. Come on, Haskell. We're going for a ride, you and me. Okay, you can't. Come on, come on. Suddenly, Mick Duffy got into a jam without realizing what he was doing. I'm not satisfied he did. Don't forget, the lock on the door was broken open. Well, couldn't he have done that as a blind? Oh, that's just good. I want to look around for prints, though, on the door, please. Uh-huh. You can compare them with Haskell's prints. There'd be plenty of those inside. And if they match? That would prove Haskell was a liar. And if they don't? Well, oh, that's something else. Wouldn't prove much one way or the other. Not until we get some more facts to go with him. And that's our job right now, Fessy. Getting all the facts we can. So the prince didn't have. Well, couldn't that mean that somebody was working with Haskam on this? It could. What could mean Haskam is innocent? Good afternoon. You the owner of this camp? Yeah, sure I am. But we're full up right now. See? I'm glad to hear. But I just want some information. Oh, sure. Glad to tell you what I can. See? You know Charlie Haskin, don't you? Oh, sure. Yeah. Nice young fella. He didn't have a chip on his shoulder all the time. Not a very sociable fellow, I should imagine. Sure ain't. Does he have any friends in the camp here? Sure don't. I've seen him talk to the young couple leaving beside him, but that's all. See? I suppose you know most of the people in this town. Oh, sure. Yeah, there ain't no chances just now. It's kind of the housing Jordan. Uh-huh. All nice people? Oh, sure. Yeah. All except the guy got the tail of the other side of Haskell. Don't like him. He don't live there. Just use it to go kind of office. Office? What kind? I don't know. But there's always a lot of queer-looking men running in out there every night. We tried to get rid of them, but they found no good reason. Well, what's the name of the man who lives there? Hey, Jones. Who's in Jones? That's not a funny name. I'll look my house. Sounds funny, do Jones home now? No, no, never there during the day, only at night. Okay, thank you for your trouble. So long. Hey, so long, mister. Glad to help you. Eh? We, um, calling Mr. Jones, telling We are, back to you immediately. Before Mr. Jones gets back, I hope. Isn't that the satellite talking about his job? Hmm? Oh, yes, it is. Say, may I speak to you a moment? Mm-hmm. Sure. What's on your mind? How well do you know Charlie Haskell? Well, is he in trouble? Maybe. Maybe not. That's what I'm trying to find out. How well do you know him? Oh, it's just a feature. You don't make friends easy. That's like that. So I know it. What was that about a job? Oh, why, yes. Uh, well, this fellow offered me a job running a truck yesterday. He was restless, you know. When I was busy and I knew Charlie needed money, so I told him about it. Who offered you the job? Oh, a fellow named Jones. Uh, lives in that trailer right ahead of you there. I see. Okay, thanks very much. Oh, don't mention it. Hey, I hope Charlie makes out all right. Oh, and that certainly ties up, doesn't it, Miss? The mysterious Mr. Jones seems to have indicated that our next point of contact, at least. Oh, looks as if Jones was out, Miss. 
Sandra. Mr. Jones? Not so easy this time. His door is locked. Yes, I think he'll go in anyway. Isn't it all daylight like this? The owner said Jones was never around in the daytime. Yeah, we can't wait. There. Oh, that was easy. I'll bet you hate it to be. Stay outside the door. If anybody looks as if they were coming, it's not singing. Mm-hmm. And I can get out fast. Right. Well, listen. From here, you can look right into Haskins' cell and see his more than he's playing. Maybe Mr. Jones... Maybe. Now, don't forget. If anyone comes, you will sing. Cook, and I never did. But if you've been a little more cooperative, 
Help? Why should I be? Nobody ever cooperates with me. You don't give them a chance. Chance to what? That's to be friendly. They're all against me. I can't get a break anyway. No, no, no. Look. Nobody's against you. Have a little tough luck, same as a lot of other men just out of the service of head. And you made a personal issue out of it. Just your own personal reaction to an unpleasant situation. How do you figure that? I can't get a job. I can't get a place where my wife and I can live together. I can't no, no, get... Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's the fact. See if we can't do something about this. You know any other men who don't have jobs? Sure, plenty of them. You know any other men who haven't found a place to live? Yeah. But what's that got to do with... Everything. Are all these other men you know convinced that the world is out to do them dirt? Well, no. Not all of them, but... I know a couple of them. Well, oh, yes, yeah. you're one of a small minority of guys who take it out and play things. It doesn't help the situation at all. Well, maybe, but I haven't had it. I'm an auto mechanic, and a darn good one, too. I'm sure you are. Suppose I find you a job. Will you take it? Sure, I'll take it. And if you and your wife will be satisfied with a furnished room until something better offers, I can fix you up for that, too. Interested? Sure. Wait, if I can have Mary here with me, I, I, I feel a whole lot better. About everything, I guess. That's good. Here's $50. That'll help you to pay your wife's transportation and buy whatever things you need. Okay, look, look, look. Um, look, Mr. Carter, I, I don't need your money. We'll make that somehow. Now, look, if you can share it, it's a loan. I expect you to pay me back when you can. Thanks, Mr. Carter. You're swell. That's Miss Carter, and I always try to help somebody when he can. Why are you doing all this for me? A stranger. Captain, we all owe you, boys, who are in the service. More than anything, I believe so. If anything I can do will help to pay that right debt and get you started on the right road, I want to do it. I'm going to see that you get what's coming to you. Oh, oh. oh no. That's what you usually say to the crooks attack. You're going to get what's coming to you. Oh, yes, that's the idea. But this time, I'm talking to a friend. Right, Hudson? Right, Mr. Carter. Oh, thank you. A friend is a wonderful thing to have. Well, Nick, how about letting us in on your story for next week? Glad to do it, Phil. My story includes the list of the diamonds stolen from Mrs. Larkin's safe, the print of a pointed shoe in the garden, a telephone number that refused to answer, and the place where diamonds are worth more than anywhere else in the world. And there was excitement, too. When our plane dropped down through the fog trying to locate that ship at sea, oh, I was sure my last hour had passed. Clues and excitement, eh? Sounds like a good combination. What's the name of the story, Nick? I call it The Case of the Unwilling Criminal. <laughs> which is produced and directed by Jack McGregor, is copyrighted by Stephen Smith Publications Incorporated. Fictive stories of Nick Carter appear in every issue of the Shadow Comics. In the broadcast of Nick Carter, Master Detective, Ron Clark is starred as Nick, Scarlet Manson is featured as Patsy, Matty is played by Ed Latimer, Waldo by Humphrey Davis. Original music is played by George Wright. Script is by Peggy Mayer and Jack McGregor. Any resemblance in these programs to actual persons living or dead or to actual places is purely coincidental. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented over most of these mutual stations every week at the same time. This is Bill Johnson saying so long until next week. was heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.